first and second, nobody out. First pitch is a fastball high for a ball. Mention our umpires behind a dish, C.J. Durham on the base, bases. We have Scott Reel and Nick DiDonato. That pitch is outside for a ball. It's out 2-0. Oh. Marco Lavari in an early inning jam. Pitch is fouled at the plate. Here's a 2-1 pitch. High for a ball. Navari probably a little extra pumped up as the adrenaline's flowing. Do you agree with that, Coach? Yes, I would. Fast ball's up again. Count now 3-1, and one, the Guadalupe. Navari definitely wants to bear down and try to get this out here. He doesn't want to load the bases. And he walks him. So Lavari loads the bases with a walk. That'll bring up Yaniel Laponte. Now batting, number Yeah, listen, Lavari has been in big time spots before in tournament play. All these years past, certainly a guy that the East Violent Crew has leaned on time and again, and. More importantly, in his high school career. So, St. Augustine Prep, he's pitched in some prime spots. I can assure you, if there's a kid out here on the field that's not going to really be bothered too much by the fact that these bases are loaded early on, it's going to be that him. Pitch is ripped to center field, taking the center fielder way back. And that ball's at the fence. One run will score. Here comes the second. And Aponte gets a two run double, the dead center field. Well, I talked about it at the jump. You know, you got a hot team with a hot bat. It's not like you're going home and sleeping and then coming back. These guys are picked up right where they left off, and uh, no surprise. They sure have, and Nick Bancroft now steps to the plate with runners at second and third, and still nobody out, and two runs across for North Vineland. Yeah, I'm going to go back to it, that when you're playing in an all-star environment, the regular kind of – you know, unwritten rules of operating go out the window. And that's why I said sometimes you're going to do different things that you wouldn't be accustomed to because really the only thing that matters is how does you, the manager, get your team to respond in the dugout. You know, and as I say that, one of the best is Joey Rodriguez. So you can, you can see Joey Rodriguez behind. That pitch is lifted deep but foul on the third base side. Go ahead. So we got a couple of uh, rules, things are trying to straighten out. You can hear some of the, the background noise here. So not allowed to have a sleeve on your uh, bat as you're warming up, and that's what umpire C.J. Dorham is telling the on-deck batter there, number 40, the eagle eye of Kathy Jost, the district administrator up here in the booth. And that's a no-no. You cannot do that in uh, Little League, Senior League, et cetera, et cetera. But going back to it, Again. That ball's ripped right at shortstop. Andrioli who makes the grab. Nice work. First out. Nice play. Nice work by Andrioli keeping his cool, watching the ball all the way into his glove. Nice heads up base running on a guy on third, too. Now Adrian Forty. bring up number 40, Adrian Forty, who's DHing. Followed the rule of thumb, see a line drive freeze. Good job behind the dish. Donnie Gomez, double duty. When uh, your back's against the wall, coach, you're not uh, getting a break. <laughs> Absolutely. Catch two. 40 hitting for Caden Perez, who's on the mound today. Yeah, Marco Lavari starting to get loose here. Feeling uh, a little bit better feeling now for the zone. 
Oh, big swing and a miss by 40. That yep. fastball gets by him. Count now one and two. And a one-two pitch. It bounces up there as it gets away. Game number three. The winner is crowned the District 3 champion and will head to the Sectional 4 tournament. Starting in just a few days, I believe July the 5th. Marco Lavari gets his sign, a 2-2 pitch. Oh. Strike three, struck him out in the inside Real corner. Pitch. Real yeah, good pitch. That, that there is a bit of nastiness from Marco Lavari. We'll take a look at the put-out pitch here on the RK Chevrolet replay. Number seven, Lewis Rivera. Lewis Rivera now steps to the plate with two outs. And runners at second and third. And two runs across for with Violent. First pitch is low and away for a ball. Yeah, in a game three, a uh, winner take all, man. This is what it's all about. I mean, these are the type of nights. Fantastic weather. It's under the bright lights. Kids will remember this one for years and years to come. Count now one and one. Pitch is low for a ball. Yeah, Rivera looked like he was squaring, giving something to yep, think about with two outs. It. It's a smart move by that veteran. And that pitch is fouled away. His count moves to two and two to him with two outs. So Deuce is wild. Yeah, interesting defensive setup there for a second by Ease Vineland as with two outs they had the corner infielder on third base side way up, but now he's moved back with two strikes. And a 2-2 pitch from Lavari. Pop foul the first base side and out of play. So those deuces are still wild. Here in the top of the first inning. Runners at second and third. And a 2-2 pitch. Just a bit low. Now a full count to Rivera. Base open, but obviously Lavari wants to get this out and foul tip. As Lavera stays alive. Yeah, Lavari, he's uh, again. No game is going to be too big for him. So Lavari gets a sign from Gomez, and here's the payoff pitch. Cued off his bat. It's going to be a tough one for Angie. Really cut off at third, and here's the throw. And they get him. Wow. What a play. Great play by Garcia, who cuts it off in front of Angie Early to make the play. Huge play. This is exactly what they need. We'll take a look at it on replay. I mean, Andrew Oli, just phenomenal job. Slow roller, gets to it, chucks it across the way, and oh my, gets him. And what a stretch over there at first base. Great job by Santiago, and that'll end his half inning, but two runs, two hits, no errors, and one left. We'll go back to the bottom of the first. We just scored 2 nothing, North Vineland.
Move to the bottom of the first inning. East Vineland coming to the plate. Down two to nothing. As Benedito Andrioli steps to the plate. Had himself a good first game tonight. Got uh, got a little conversation going on here. You have no idea. I'm working on it. Got some some friendly conversation going on here. A lot of interest in the pitch count when you're yeah. dealing with all stars. In the top of the first inning. Remember those days, Doug? That pitch is high for a ball. So good battle here now. Caden Perez taking the hill. Talked about being in a big spot for Lavari for East and uh Caden Perez, absolute baller in his own right. And a 1-0 pitch. Swing and a miss by Andreoli. Count now moves to one and one. Andreoli had himself a good game where went two two for two, I think. Right, actually two for three. Pitch is a strike called. And you're only not agreeing with it. And the one-two pitch from Perez. He tried to throw a breaking ball there to hung outside, and it's now two and two. Perez gets a sign, a 2-2 pitch. Bounces up there for a ball. Count runs the full. Still a lot of emotion. Oh, there's listen. Still a lot of emotion. It doesn't get much better than <clears throat> north versus east. There's a ball hit in the hole, and that'll be a base hit to left field. So Andrioli leads the bottom of the first off with a single to left. I mean, you great sit there. Yeah, great piece yeah. of hitting. But going back to your point, Coach, lots of emotion. It's one of my favorite rites of passage in the summer for as many years as I can remember being out here. You, know, you get to the final of the districts, and it's east versus north or north versus south or south versus east. It doesn't matter. Right? You take those three teams, put them any which way you want, and you're, you're going to be entertained at a minimum. I remember being in districts and it wasn't any of those. It was pretty uh, – our neighbors, actually. Duh, yeah. That they, was fun. Yeah, the one against the one against Millville. <laughs> Naz Mercado at the plate. That pitch is low for a ball. Yeah, that, that game there, throwing it way back over. It was played at South Island over at Landis Park, but it was East Island versus Millville. It was 2013. Ball's hit hard to short. Could be a double play ball. It skips by. So an error by Ortiz. Gets Mercado at first base. And Andrioli moves up to second. Tough spot to be in. Put the ball in play. Good things happen. Absolutely. That's baseball 101. Well, and uh, hope, for hope. East, might be a little bit of break they need to coach. Well, hope, hopefully East has an answer to the two runs scored in the top of the first now. That'll bring up Justin Morris playing second base today. First pitch to him is cued off the bat, and that's going to be a difficult play to make, and they get Mars, or they no. don't get Mars. That ball gets by to run score. Yeah, tough one to handle there. Try to speed it up just yes, probably a little bit too much. Had more time than he thought, and the throw just went wide. So opportunities opening up for East Vineland here at the bottom of the first inning. They get a run across. Nobody out. And runners at first and third. And that'll bring up Marco Lavari. The ever dangerous Marco Lavari. Yeah, well, opportunity for him to help himself. Yep. First pitch is a fastball in the outside corner for a strike call. at the corners, nobody out, no one count. That ball gets by and a run will score. 
And this place is lighting up as Mercado crosses the plate. But I had a quick answer back. Hey, that, that's the only quick way. Answer back. That's the only way to answer. This, this game is lighting up just like the lights here at Fioki Field. So runner at second base now in scoring position. Opportunity for Lavari take the lead here with one swing of the bat. One one count. Perez sets the one one pitch. All the way for a ball. It's now two and one. Marco Lavari hitting a bomb in the first game. Dead center field in the second inning. That count now moves to three and one. He's in a hitter's position right now, coach. Yes, he is. Taking fastball here, coach. Somewhere in the drive. And that 3 1 pitch is outside. A little, I, I didn't tee up early enough, coach. That's nope. on me. That's all right. This game's moving fast and furious for us to even tee each other up, to be honest. But. Donnie Gomez now will step to the plate. Still nobody out. And runners at first and second. Two runs across for East Final, and they've knotted this game up at two to two. First pitch is high for a ball. Count now moves the three and zero to Donnie Gomez with Christian Willis waiting on deck. Perez gets his sign and a 3 0 pitch. Strike called as Gomez has to come back. Hey, got the free one. That's always one of the unnerving ones. See the old back get thrown. I know for me as a coach, I was always cringing. I'm like, oh man. It's like, could this is could a turn into three and two real yeah, quick. Yeah, because right here's now. what happens. <laughs> then what happens is the 50 50 pitch becomes more like a 60 40. Yep. And that 3-1 nope. one pitch is out of the zone. Ball four. Gomez draws a walk. Now we have bases loaded and still nobody out. And Christian Willis steps to the plate. Willis had a nice double back in game number one. So big opportunity for East Vine to blow this game wide open early. Bases loaded and nobody out. That first pitch is high for a ball. Pitch over for a strike call. One on one to count to Christian Willis. Here's the one one pitch. Low for a ball. Now two and one. Gets his sign. 
and a 2-1 pitch. That ball's flared to right field, has a chance to fall, and it just falls fair. Foul, I should say. That meant to be foul, but it came out fair. It was, I, then that means it was fairly foul. <laughs> oh, coach, way to pick up for me, man. That's a good call on your part. Count now moves to even at 2-2 two and two to Willis. <laughs> fairly foul. Good call by you. Here's the 2-2 pitch. Fouled straight back, so it remains 2-2. Two two. That looks like the old lady that lived in the show staring out the window because <laughs> he's calling the game. I am get, my yeah. legs actually hurt. I'm like pacing and trying to get everything right. Got Try it. to run the monitor when yeah. it's time to run the monitor. If your breath is kicking, I feel bad for Kathy Jost right now. She did say something. She was making oh a comment God. earlier. Gary, Here. here's the 2-2 two -two pitch. Oh, I, I like that move by Willis. It just... Flip his bat out there and foul it off. Coach, what do you think that, of that? Yes, huh? he did, yep. Absolutely. Good, good job. Kathy, is my breath bad? Is my breath bad? Do I need a certs or a lifesaver? <laughs> certs. Certs. <laughs> it's going up next. A cup of Sanka for dessert. Oh, strike three. Struck him out. That pitch was on the outside corner as Willis goes down looking. Yeah, that's a great pitch right yeah, there by Perez. Really was. I mean, good location. Take a quick look at it on the replay. I mean, good boom. call by the umpire, C.J. Doran, behind the dish. Yeah, that there is a nice pitch. Now that is then I'll bring up number 10, Dimitri Santiago. That first pitch is on the inside corner for a strike call. It appears the East Finland squad is being very patient and selective on their swings early in this ballgame. Well, pitch the reality misses. of it is a bit of a different approach. We talked about North Island, you know, pitch selection and recognition in game number one worked to their advantage very early in this game. I know we're only in the bottom of the first, but, you know, now it seems like East Vineland calmed down a little bit. That pitch is high for a ball. Santiago right here doing a nice job working the count on his own right. Two and one, works himself ahead. No room left in this, as I like to call it, the four-room hotel. So, you either got to. Must be a Motel 6 because it'll leave the light on for you. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, you like that? No. That pitch is high for a ball. It's now 3-1. and one. Santiago did a nice job. Game number one came in, ate up a bunch of innings, trying to help build the bridge for what's left of this East Vineland pitching staff for game number three. Championship ticket on the line for the District 3 Senior League title. 3 1 pitches out of the zone. A run will score, and it's now a 3 to 2 ball game in favor of East Vineland. So now the base is still loaded and only one out. Mike Gansif. Gansif. Bat has been hot. It looks like we're going to have a yeah. special pinch runner. It's number 18, Martinez, in for Dimitri Santiago, a.k.a. Meech. Gans have had a line drive single when he came into the game to left field, and he lined out the short. First pitch First called game. strike. Looks like the low part of the zone being consistently called. Here's the 0-1 pitch. Oh, big swing and a miss. Ganza. Real big swing. Yeah, yanked his head out a little bit yeah, on that one. Did, yep. He wanted to he wanted to tattoo it. Time to get the defensive coach, right? Shorten it up a little bit with an 0-2 count. That'd be a good choice right now. Especially with runners in scoring position. Here's the, oh, what was, okay, timeout called. This pitcher was in 
Motion. <laughs> Here's a 3 2 pitch, or 0 2 pitch, I should say. Sorry about that. It's now 1 and 2 to Gaganza. He was ready to call another strike if he caught it. Caden Perez gets his sign. And a one-two pitch. Oh, wow. defensive swing by Gaganzev as he yes, fouls that one off. <clears throat> so the count remains one and two to Mike Gaganzev with the bases loaded. Perez gets a sign for Cortez, winds, and the one-two pitch. Outside for a ball, it's now two and two. Yeah, a little premature for the catcher to be popping up. You're not going to be able to get the top half of that zone, so it's probably something coach might want to talk to him about between innings. Granik Ganza, he shot up. He gets every bit of 6-1. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. Big so swing, too. Big swing. Gansev goes down swinging. So it's been a while since we've felt, at least this afternoon, the momentum sway to East Island as North Island's been a juggernaut with the bats. Bases loaded here, one run lead. Garcia, big opportunity to do just that. Garcia hit a shot last game. A double. Once that first pitch is over for a strike call. It's going to open things up for him a little bit, too, if he got to hit the ball hard someplace now. As Garcia showing some pop, not your typical nine hole hitter. And that breaking pitch just missed for a ball. So it's one and one to Garcia. Again, bases loaded now with two outs. Cade Perez winds. And the pitch. High for a ball. Time called. Looks like Alvin Cortez coming out to have a conversation with his pitcher, Caden Perez. Alvin always a uh, intense coach. He's into every single pitch. He wants to make sure that he and his pitcher are on the same page, especially in a one-run game. Bases loaded, two outs. It seemed like there might have been a mix-up uh, in the signs, but... So he's saying it was a checking of his arm, not a visit to the mound. And uh, I kind of spoke to some of my old magic tricks back <laughs> when I had to do uh, mound visits, and it looks like Elvin uh, has one I could learn from. That pitch bounces up there. It's now three and one. <laughs> Sam Garcia in a big opportune moment here at three and one bases loaded I already know he's got some pop here's the three one pitch from Perez bounces up there for a ball and a run will score as he's filing out takes a four to two lead here in the bottom of the first inning looks like we have to catch her down here oh I think he might have Might have taken a ball that uh, got a piece of him there on that one. Didn't see it. But uh, looks like he took a, a bouncing uh, ball there, so we'll pull the camera. Uh, might, might have came uh, straight up underneath the uh, coffee cup. 
That's a good way to look at it. I'll take mine with two sugars and cream. <laughs> Not right now, you won't. <laughs> All right, well, you know what? We uh, finally have some time to do, Al, since we kind of were drinking out of the fire as we start this game. We can take a look at the uh, the lineup. So right now we have East Violin at the bat, so why not take a look at that East Violin starting lineup and tonight for game number three. It was Benny Andrioli, Naz Mercado, Justin Morris, Marco Lavari, Donnie Gomez, Christian Willis, Dimitri Santiago, Mike Kaganziff, Sam Garcia, and the manager, Gabe Santiago. Does that mean Santiago plays too, since you mentioned him? Does he get to take some swings to the plate? I got to give credit where credit's due. He gets, the, as I like to say, all the headaches all right. without the excedrin. All right, Cortez back in the game as we get back to live baseball. Back to the top of the order, nonetheless, with Benny Andrioli. He let off with a single to left field his first time up, so we batted it around. That first pitch is low for a ball. And the 1-0 pitch. Line drive the left field. That's going to be falling for a base hit. Run one will score. Here comes the second with no throw. And East Vineland now taking a 5-2 lead here in the bottom of the first. Well, big time poke when needed it, needed it the most. And Andreoli, he delivers yet again. See the wind up from Perez, and he lifts it into Oppo Field for the RBI. Ball was middle out, so he just took it the opposite way. Yeah, good piece of hitting. Yes, it was. Looks like we got I, a. I, have, I actually have 62 on my scorebook. I'm going to talk to. Uh, I have I've I have one two three four five six. So it's uh six to two, but we'll double check that during the break between innings. That ball's lifted to center field. It'll stay in the park, and a grab made there by Rodriguez. But East Vineland puts six on the board in the bottom of the first on three hits. No errors. I'm sorry. Three errors and two left. We'll go to the top of the second with your score, 6-2, East Vineland. Welcome back as we move to the top of the second inning. He's finally now with a 6-2 to two lead after that first, so lots of electricity, and we're right close to 4th of July, Coach. A lot of fireworks in that first inning. Marco Lavari takes the man, and we'll show you the starting lineup. That was a long first inning. It was, well, but a fun one nonetheless to call. Give our district leader your uh, rag for the uh, pizza. Okay, there you go. The starting lineup now for North Vineland. <laughs> David Ortiz leads off and plays shortstop. Xavier Cortez, the two-hole playing and catching that second. A.J. Guadalupe, third. Yeniel Aponte follows him in the four-hole position. Batting fifth, Nick Bancroft. Sixth, Adrian Forty as a designated hitter. Batting seventh, Luis yeah, Rivera in left field. Carlos yeah, Rodriguez sure. batting eighth in center field. And Luke Casimir in right field at bats ninth. And, of course, Gabe Santiago, your coach. 
Elvin Cortez for North. That's oh, it said gay. Uh, all right. I'm, I'm, I was just like, uh, you, you, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> who is it again? Go ahead. Go ahead. Say it. Elvin Cortez? No. Who am I? That I always read what's oh, on the screen? Ron Burgundy. Ron Burgundy. Yeah, there you go. And you know what I say about San Diego? <laughs> all right. <laughs> I knew it was Elvin Cortez, and I read what was on the screen. What an... Uh, I'm an ID10T. That's all right. No problem. <laughs> all right. Carlos Rodriguez leads off. Big swing right there. Uh, hey, look. A little bit of a tide has turned a little bit. Strike three struck a bat on three pitches. As Marco Lavari looks like somebody's getting to get a little giddy up in his, in his groove right now. Yep, right back to work up on the hill. Yeah, and I'll bring up Luke Casimir. First pitch from Lavari. Fouls that off to the first base side and out of play. He's finally probably feeling a little extra adrenaline after going in a big hole in game number one early on. And they come out, put up, give up two runs in the first and come right back with six. Count now moves to one and one. A good pitch right there. Marco Lavari working ahead. Count now one and two to Casimir. And that one two pitch is out of the zone. Strike three struck him out as Kazmir goes down looking. Back to back K's for Marco Lavari. Yeah, another look at this pitch. Good location. Freezing him. Yeah, real good location. Painting corners. One of his coaches, Mike Kaganza. Gotta be excited about seeing him. He paints more than corners, though. I've seen some of his work. It's about the Great details. job. That ball is a. Well, cue shot. As Andrew Utley throws and does not get him. That good 90 right there, I'll tell good, you that. Good 90, a good Real pick good by Santiago. Yeah. So Ortiz gets an infield single. So Santiago, good stretch. It's a great hustle play here watching Andrew Utley shuffle and fire. Good call by Scott Real. It's easy to call from here. It might have been one too many shuffles, maybe. Good point by you, Coach. Now that Xavier, Cortez Xavier Cortez walked his last time up. Just kind of have to think about it. Cortez, his second time around seeing Marco Lavari. Really good pitch. Pitch gets Man. by, and <laughs> Ortiz will move up to second. Dude, that was a nasty curveball. Yes, I mean, it was. nasty. The spin on that thing, it must have dropped a good 18 inches. And uh, understandably so, once I hit the dirt, Gomez is going to struggle to keep up with that one. That pitch is inside for a ball. So the count now moves to 3-1 and one to Xavier Cortez. It was nice to hear you not talk about the spin right. Right, spin right. Nah. Did you have like 20? He had 2,300 on that one. That pitch is over for a strike call, so the count goes Good to pitch. full. All right, it corrected. It's actually two and two. Thank you to Mr. Gary Abel. And a 2 2 pitch. Ooh, strike three. Struck Good him pitch, out. Too. Real good pitch. As Marco Lavari strikes out the side. And we will go to the bottom of the second inning with your score, East Vineland 6, North Vineland wow. 2, here on BFA Sports.
the bottom of the second inning. New pitcher on the mound is David Ortiz for North Vineland. And the first batter he will face is Justin Morris. Reached on an error his first time up, back in the first. Looks like. Oh boy, some little discussion here. Yeah, first pitch was out of the zone for a ball, so it's 1 0. Justin Mars. Fouls that one back and out of play. So the count evens up at one and one. Oh, big swing and a miss by Mars. But no contact. The count goes now to one and two. Two pitch is low and away for a ball. Now even at two and two. And two two pitch is hitting a hole. It's gonna be a tough play for short. There's the throw and not in time. As Justin Morris legs out an infield single. That was a nice play by the shortstop though. Had a lot of range. Yeah, he did everything that he could to keep that thing going. Yep. Now batting number eight, Marco. That'll bring up number eight, Marco Lavari. Reached on a base on balls his last time up. Oh, big swing and a miss. No contact, but that ball would have gone a long way. He's keeping Mars at bay at first. Here's the pitch. That ball lifted to right field, hit fairly shallow as the right fielder comes in as Casimir makes the grab. Oh, it fell. I'm sorry. Well, that's this is a great opportunity for Pearl Vision. Forget Lens Crafters. Is Pearl Vision sponsoring this inning? <laughs> Listen, Coke bottle glasses are not working for me, so I need to go somewhere. Uh, yeah, we're going to update the scoreboard here in a second, kids. A little technical. Pitch is high for a ball. <laughs> that ball's hit up the middle. Gets through for a base hit. Christian Willis is at the plate. Runners are first and second. That pitch is high for a ball. And the 1-0 pitch. Over for a strike call. Nice pitch on the outside corner. Count even at 1-1 one one to Willis. And that 1-1 one, one pitch is out of the zone for a ball. It's now 2-1. and one. That 2-1 one pitch is hit hard to right center field. That's going to fall for a base hit. Runners will hold at all bases, and it's now bases loaded with one out. Dimitri Santiago step into the plate. 
Big play, uh, big hit there yeah. by Willis. Yes, it was. And I think even more importantly, East Island not being too aggressive on the bases, don't want to make a big potential play out at one of them in this situation. Big spot for Dimitri Santiago. That's, that's a shot to left field, but it's fairly shallow. A runner will fake and not come home. The ball was not hit deep enough. So that'll be the second out of the inning as Rivera catches that one out in left field. Now then, number 12. Micah Ganzev at the plate. I didn't realize they call him Mish. I like that. Mish, right? Okay, Mish Ganzev. The plate, I got confused. I thought the wrong batter was up. I, and then again, that's happened many times to me. Oh, big swing by Gaganzev. big Gaganzef. swing right there. Yeah, not to be confused, because his teammate, Dimitri Santiago, they call him Mich. So Mikey is Mish with an S. Hands it now. Another down. big swing. Down in the count one and two. Needs to hate to repeat myself. Shorten up now. Down one and two. For a golden opportunity with the bases loaded. Just to try to put the bound ball and make something happen. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. So North Vineland dodges a real bullet. A big bullet there. Big there. We'll go to the top of the third with your score six to two. Favor of East Violin here on BFA Sports. All right, top of the third. North Vineland down six to two. They try to get a little something going with AJ Guadalupe leading off. Facing Marco Lavari. Lavari currently at 46 pitches. That pitches out of the zone for a ball. And now 
moves to 2-0. Here's a 2-0 pitch. Right there over the meat of the plate for a strike call. Don't jump. It's now two and one. Oh, and that pitch. Good pitch. Oh, that was nasty. Good it was pitch. Filthy had movement on it. It's now two and two. You got Guadalupe to swing. Strike three, struck him out as he gets Guadalupe swinging. So with one out, that'll bring up Yaniel Aponte. Two RBI double his last time up. Back into first. That was a real good pitch. Yeah, good location, LeVar. Yeah, Run away from the lefty. Back to back lefties now in the lineup. That first pitch is over for a strike call. Yeah, he's uh, might have been a little long in the first inning for Lavari, but these uh, last two, wow. Swing and a miss. So Ponte cannot catch up to that one. Just now quickly in an 0-2 hole. And here's the 0-2 pitch. Outside for a ball. <laughs> It's great to sit there and watch Lowry beat himself up a little bit on that pitch. He's like, man, I knew I had the right call. I just didn't get the one I wanted. Lowry gets a sign, winds, and a 1-2 pitch. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Lowry. Just doing a nice job, Coach. He's mixing it just up. You know, he's giving them a fair amount of good looks, so they're watching some of that curveball pop up 12-6. Hypnotizes him, come back, and then he's hitting that outside corner pretty hard. There it is again. 12-6 curve. That's a curve. Really good job. Nick, Ban Nick Bancroft at the plate. Takes the first pitch over for a strike. And comes right back with another. It's now 0-2. Yeah. Vertical move. Coach, you're, you're shaking your head in amazement, aren't you? You're liking what you see. That's what you want me to say. That's what I'll say. All right. So I'm two. good with that. That pitch is lifted to right field, actually right around second base, and making the grab is Morris, and that will end the inning. That's One, two, the three. Inning. Go North Vineland. We'll be I, back with the bottom third. Well, go ahead, Coach. What do you got? Well, I got a thing from uh, Rutgers University Camden Baseball. Rutgers Camden Baseball and Vineland Baseball have a summer skills camp on July 6th, 7th, 8th, and 9th at Vineland High School for ages 8 to 14 being run by uh, Coach Ryan Kulik from Rutgers Camden. Awesome. Good so stuff. I hope to see it. We have five more, 50, I'm sorry, 15 more spots open, and uh, we can make it a good week. Yeah. Might be a little bit hot, but we'll get through it. Uh, that's great. Good benefit for a Violent High baseball program as well as Rutgers Camden. Co of course, uh, Coach Kulik, a Violent resident, his wife, Tina, just a uh, uh, Hung up her coaching cleats over at uh, Violent Softball, so certainly a family that understands and appreciates the dynamic of teaching the game of baseball in Violent for sure. So be sure that you can well check that out. Is there uh, go right there on? You can email Coach Kulik on R Instagram. All right, cool. So you can email Coach Kulik at 28 at gmail .com. and of course you can go to the complete picture on Instagram. And it's also on the East Violent Little League Facebook page. So if you're looking for more information, you can uh, go right there. Plenty of opportunities to find it. Let's go looking. And you being a parent and having two kids, I mean, you know how hard it is to coach and have two kids at the same time like the Kulik's. Ugh. I mean, one might live in Vineland, but then the other one's got a 45 minute to drive to uh, Rutgers Camden. That's a difficult task. Uh, yeah, it is. So sometimes, uh, you know. The, kid, only, the kids come and call, and you only get to do that once. There's only one worse drive than that, the one driving from Woodbury to Princeton every day. Yeah, that's not fun. That's not fun. <laughs> All right, bottom of the third inning is East Vinyl looks to put another crooked number on the board. So look to extend this lead. So they currently have a four-run lead, 6-2. to two. Sam Garcia steps to the plate. That first pitch is over for a strike call. Garcia. Six RBI years of that, and I'm still somewhat sane. Hey, you've given a lot back to a lot of players, Coach, and I know you still get out there, still continue to 
work with those looking for some help. So great to see that you'll be a part of that crew over there at Vineland High for the Rutgers Camden Baseball and Vineland Baseball Summer Skills Camp. Here's the 1-1 pitch. High for a ball. And I mentioned Joey Rodriguez earlier on in the game, Coach uh, Joe back there. Guy never stops. He was one of my favorite guys to actually coach with. I should say coach against. So usually, if there was a district final and it had East versus South or East versus North, nine times out of ten, he always seemed like he was the other guy in the dugout. So, some uh, epic battles over the years. So, always great to see Coach Joey. 3-1 pitch is high for a ball. So Garcia gets a leadoff walk here in the bottom of the third. Yeah, Joey Rodriguez. Lots of great memories. Let's talk about an intense dude. But a pro's pro, too, at the same time, if you want to. Baseball diehard, man. He'll help any kid that's out there that loves the game. It's as simple as that. And, and that's how the game grows. So, you know, east, north, south, doesn't matter. You got great dudes like him willing to jump on the field in the dugout. It's a beautiful thing for the kids. So Trying to pick off Sam Garcia. Gets back safely. Benny well, that's, that's like you guys, too. You do it for the kids. There's a lot of people out there doing it for the money, and uh, that's not the right way you should do it. Yeah. Benny Andrioli now steps to the plate, having himself a good game so far. He's, he's two for two. Single in the first and scoring, and he had a two-run RBI single in the second. You know, we started uh, game number one, uh, kind of a moment of silence there for uh, East Vineland's brother and Tyler Hensley and uh, Coach Joey. So his son, Aiden had uh, passed away in a tragic accident earlier this year as well. And so he's, uh, he's wearing his Aiden's Angels jersey over there behind the dugout. I'm sure Drew can get a shot of that soon. Pitch misses for a ball. Over there in the yes. background of the right-handed hitter. There he is. There's Coach Joe rocking the Aiden's Angels jersey. So, again, another young, fine young man. Lost way too soon, who enjoyed his time out on this baseball field, usually around this time of the year, all-stars. And, you know, his his dad, again, one of the just best baseball dudes around. So uh, really cool stuff to see these guys out here and uh, continuing to play the game. And family's getting a lot of support out here, both from – East, North, and South local little leagues. Andrew really tries to chop that down the third base side yes, and get on any way he can, but it goes foul. And he stays alive. The count remains one and two. How many days you guys got off? None? I, after this one, we actually have like five days off, which hasn't happened since, I don't know, man. Been some road warriors. Hard ground ball to second. Flips to second. Oh, he drops the ball. That ball go out the left field. Moving over to second base is Garcia. Our third base is Garcia. And Andrioli moves up to second. I mean, good things happen when you put the bat in the ball. Yeah, Ortiz gets the job done, induces a ground ball. Could have been, should have been maybe argued a double play. Yep, and but it wasn't. And instead, leave the door open for East Vineland. Now back, number one, Nas Mercado. So now runners at second and third, and nobody out. And Nas Mercado reached on an error on a shortstop in the first and flew out to center his second time up. First pitch, swing and a foul behind us. Mercado, aggressive at the plate. Yes, he was. 
And I'll tell you, you talk about some of the uh, the alums that have played in some of these senior league district championship games around here, getting it done at the next level. Man, that's amazing. There's a ball. It's lifted the left field, hit deep, but right at the left fielder. And here, tagging and scoring is Sam Garcia. So they're matriculating the ball, putting runs on the board. Andrioli holds it second base, but a good at bat nonetheless by Naz Marcato. Bit of a tale of two games here, Coach. It's like yeah, well, kind of opposite yeah. how things work we'll, out. We'll try matriculation into this somehow. <laughs> we'll get it to fit in here. That's good, though. Uh, I like that. Justin Marr steps to the plate, reached on an error by the second baseman in the first and a single in the third. First pitch is swung on and fouled back. You know, going going back to it, I was, I was saying some of the recent alum that I'm thinking about making kind of waves in a good way that have been a part of the District 3 finals. Uh, you know, some about the Rodriguez family, Jojo Rodriguez, now pitcher at St. John's after pitching. There goes a the runner, drops a bunt. They go over to first base and they get him. Good amount of sacrifice here. I like the small ball routine, moving runners over. Fundamental baseball. I was just talking about Joe Rodriguez, who had pitched for Violent High, then RCSJ Cumberland, now at St. John's. Another guy. Number eight, Marco Lavares. <laughs> Talked about Marco Lavares. He pops in. His older brother, Kenny, now at Old Dominion. Used to play for East Vineland and made it to the Super Regionals after an awesome freshman year. We got Josh Hood, who's playing tonight in the Cape Cod League. Also of uh, East Vineland from that 2017 state champion team. Big swing and a miss by Lavari. You know, it's, it's just awesome to see so many of these guys elevate from playing at the all-star level to then moving on to even bigger and brighter things on a bigger stage. Pitch misses outside for a ball. <laughs> and, uh, Al having some hay fever. Is Lavari? He lifts one, and that one's going to go into center field. But making the squeeze and ending the frame is going to be Rivera. But East Vineland able to add one more on the board. It's now 7-2 to two as we head to the top of the fourth. You're watching BFA Sports live coverage of the District 3 final. Presented by RK Chevrolet in Vineland. For your next automobile, visit the RK Chevrolet, RK Key, and RK Subaru teams. You can check them out at rkautogroup.com Welcome back to Fiogi Field here in East Vineland for the Al Fisher Roast Inning. 
BFA Sports, Doug Stasic, joined alongside my brother from another, Al Fisher, and the legendary coach, Tom Ryder. Well, I can already see that the pizza boxes are empty, so that can only mean that Al must be ready for another action of play-by-play. Uh, actually, I'm ready to take a nap after that. I have a full belly. It's time to go hibernate. And nonetheless, we're moving to the top of the fourth inning. East Violent puts another run on the board in the bottom half of the third. They lead 7-2. to two. Leading off in this half inning is Adrian Forty. First pitch is a ball. Forty struck out his only time up, looking. And that pitch is ripped to left field and making the grab is Anthony Rackets. Oh, it's Rackets down left field. Yeah, All right. Well, I, I don't right. have the monitor. I'm trying to do things out of a window. I can see it. Out I'm like window. Rapunzel right now, looking out the window. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to drop my hair. Oh, like man. That. Here have, we go. I don't yeah. think you have the you have to have hair strength first. to climb up yeah. in the window, though. Jeez. Oh, you could right. fall out of the window like Humpty Dumpty, maybe. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, that would be apropos, wouldn't it? As so Louis Rivera steps to the plate. Apropos. Nice word. Yeah. Can you spell it? I don't need to. All right. Well, look at this guy. I don't need to. It's apropos. It looks like apropos. Anyway, I digress. Is that pitch is over for a strike call? It's Marco Lavari doesn't digress in throwing strikes. Now Lavari's been uh, he's been dialed he, in. Yes, he has. And it's fouled at the plate. Count now one and two. Actually two and two. To Rivera. Yeah. No. Al, I'm, I'm glad you're uh, doing well in the American Sign Language class. It's doing well for you. Yeah, how's this one? Yeah. <laughs> you're, 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 you're number one in my book, too, buddy. Yeah, string and a miss. He struck yeah. him out. So Rivera goes down swinging. That's a seventh strikeout for Lavari. That'll bring up Carlos Rodriguez. That wasn't a very endearing gesture. What? What are you talking about? And I waved to him. Told him he was the best. Put his foul away. And another foul by Rodriguez, but he quickly goes in a hole. 0 and 2. Marco Lavari working quickly in the 0 2 pitch. Well and away for a ball. Coach, I know I always make a mistake and say that's a good waste pitch. You always say it's an effective pitch, right? Yeah, you don't waste anything. Never waste a pitch. Find, work, find one that's effective. That pitch has popped up. Shortstop Angioli making the call and making the grab. And one, two, three goes North, North Vineland in the fourth. We'll move to the bottom of the fourth with your score, 72 East Vineland here on BFA Sports.
Bottom four here at Fiocchi Field in East Vineland as East Vineland leads seven to two. Leading off the bottom of the fourth. Is Donnie Gomez followed by Christian Willis and Dimitri Santiago. Now batting, number five, Donnie Gomez. Hey, I got something right. It is Donnie Gomez. Well, you know, he took you 12 innings. So why not get one right? Just a matter of time. Yeah, I was always a slow learner. It took me that's quite not, a bit. That's not our fault. Yeah, yeah no, it was a lot of patience. I was dropped on my head quite a few times when I was younger. Shocking. Yeah. Is that why you're that much shorter than your brother? He just kept dropping you in your head? Yeah, yeah. Shortened yeah. you my, up? My vertebrae never extended as it should. You know, it's unfortunate. But. I thought it was maybe the paint chips that you constantly chewed on. Well, I was big back in the 70s when I was growing up. Huh? Yeah, there, there's some validity to that. Yeah, it's, it's that glow about you. Thank you. All right, back to series with Donnie Gomez at the plate. He rips that one to left field. Going deep, and that ball is out of here. here. Home run, Donnie Gomez. Mike, man, oh, man, did he rip into that one. Man, that was an absolute rocket. He got every bit of that you can get. Uh, and that one gets the troops fired up. We'll take a look at this one on the RK Chevrolet replay. Oh, man, even if in you, slow mo, it was a rocket. I'll tell you what, if you look at that, that just substantiates barrel up. Man, oh, man. Christian Willis. That ball is lost. That ball got out of here in a hurry. Jeez Louise. Talk about jumping all over one. First pitch is over for a strike call. Ball's chopped foul down the third base side. Count is 0 and 2 now oh, to Willis. Yeah. Coach Gabe Santiago showing off the cannon. He's a little short on the throw. So Christian Willis. Behind the count, 0-2. He struck at his first time up and had a single back in the third. There's another shot to left field. Right at the left fielder as he got all over that one and Rivera makes the grab. Cashmere. Cashmere. All right, so it was Led Zeppelin that made a catch. <laughs> they must have made some changes. Casimir was over in right field. I, I'm sorry. I, I believe you, man. I love our crack uh, production team. It gives me all the information. I'm calling the game. I'm, like, practically losing 30 pounds running all over the place trying to get this thing right. But I, Here, I, I thought you just came to eat the pizza. I, I did, know. actually. I want to thank Gary April for that. Dimitri Santiago, he digs in. Hmm. Santiago flew out his last time up, walked in the first. That pitch is over for a strike call. Count even at one and one. And Willis followed that one up with a bullet to left, though. And these guys, he's oh, finally cool, taking some. Big swing now. They are taking some hacks. There's none of them getting cheated anymore. Oh, no. I'm called. Did you leave your uh, car stereo on? I did, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, thought, my, I thought it was your iPod. I mean, I that definitely mind. sounded like uh, the Eagles. Pitches out of the zone for a ball. <laughs> I don't remember them having bass like that. Uh, in Hotel California, but. 
swing and a miss. He struck him out as Santiago goes down swinging. Now bring up Mike Gaganzev. Not or, exactly. Oh, I'm sorry. Anthony Rackets checks in. All right. To the game. He was in left field. All right, so Anthony Rackets gets his first opportunity to the plate in game number two tonight. That first pitch is high for a ball. A run across for East Pineland on a solo shot by Donnie Gomez. And that 1-0 pitch is over for a strike call. I got to give you credit, though, man. I, I know I'm giving you a hard time, but in the last five days, for those that aren't aware, this is your 158th inning of play-by-play -play called. It's <laughs> <laughs> reminding me. I feel like I've aged about 30 years. Uh, yeah, so, you know, I'll, I'll deal with your delusional. Uh... <laughs> Kathy's ready to put me in a home. Uh, no, already one made, and two. already made that reservation. Oh, sorry, thanks, buddy. man. Just got to find one. <laughs> and the count evens up at two and two. What was it again? 100 and what? This is 158 innings in the last five days we've done. I have been referred to as insane, and that must be the case. Maybe that many innings. Now, ground ball to third. Picks and fires across the diamond. And they get him. That'll nice, end the nice inning. Stretch way to hold the ball. Good job. Yeah, Guadalupe really got out and for yes, that one. Yes, he did. That'll end the inning. Not before East Violent puts another run on the board on the blast by Donnie Gomez. We'll go to the top of the fifth with your score, eight to two, East Violent here on BFA Sports. And welcome back to Fiocchi Field in East Vineland. East Vineland puts another run on the board on a home run by Gomez as we move to the top of the fifth inning. Luke Kashmir steps to the plate. First pitch is on the inside corner for a strike call as Kashmir gets tight in the box on the plate. But Marco Lavari just working it like a champ as he fouls that last pitch off. Yeah, well, Lavari has been – I mean, he's just been dominating right now. It's been – I mean, he's kept he's it. kept him in a game. Yeah, he's he, kept him in a game. No, he really has, and the fact of the matter is, he's been working the outside really hard. So, you know, it's a good adjustment. It's a nice swing that on the bat balls. there. Yep. Oh, nice that play! Ball. Nice play out there in right field by. Help me out, because I think it's Mercado originally, but I don't know if it is anymore. It is Mercado. <laughs> that, no, Cashmere moved to the left, didn't he? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you got the wrong wrong. <laughs> 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 Kathy's gonna get in this one now. She's in trouble. So Lavari's first pitch in the dirt falls short to Ortiz. Down one and zero. Ball up and out of the zone. You want to play the role of Andy Musser and come in this inning? Is that you want? Go ahead, Andy. It's all yours. I'll just sit back. You're good. Have fun. Those who know who Andy Musser is. Oh, who is he? Uh, he was a very well-respected 
play-by-play guy. Actually, color and play-by-play. Did radio, but then did TV for the Phillies. Yeah. Andy didn't have a lot of uh, a lot of energy though. I liked him. A lot of people. Well, even we even we first started. I was initially doing the was initially doing the play-by-play, and I told you it's gonna be better the other way around. There's a shot, a gap to left field. That's going to fall for a hit. Cut off nicely there. Oh, dropped the ball, but will not advance as Ortiz having himself a good evening tonight. Oh, boy. Hey, Bob. Good. Xavier Cortez now steps to the plate. First pitch to him is over for a strike call. Yeah, and, and I think you're you're trying to get a little bit of a paradigm shift here. So as Lavari's pitch count creeping up a little, you're now trying to you're kind of seeing that North Vineland gonna try to shift gears here, see if they can get into the East bullpen, who else is behind them, and then try to probably get back to work. So a question to both of you then. Does, does Marco Lavari change his approach a little bit to keep his pitch count where it needs to be but make pitch to contact? Yeah. I mean, he's – I don't think he's changing anything per se, but you may see him throw more fastballs here than right. breaking pitches for sure. Especially, you know, two outs. They can squeeze one more inning out of him. One-two pitch. Snap throw to first but not in time. So count moves to two and two to Cortez. Good job. Good move. Yeah, I was a little far away from right switch on, on that. that one. Right on that. It's reflex is slowing down. Eh, Tom Squirrel finds a nut. You never know. That ball's hit hard to ground to short. Andrew only boots it. Mm -hmm. That's put right definitely one of those positions doesn't help your pitch count when you're trying to squeeze some out. It's a tough one as Andrew really went down the knee, too. I mean, he come went down and did the right thing. Now, North continues to, again, go to work. So, Lavar's still got a decent way to go. 77 pitches. He stays the course. I mean, you're talking fifth inning. Stay the course and get these guys out of it. Big swing and a miss by A.J. Guadalupe. Oh, this is the inning if you're north, you try right. to extend it, right? Like, okay, you're up against it two outs, but if you can get him in the face another two, three batters this inning. Pitch slow and outside for a ball. It's now one and one. Again, it seems like that's... That's what the game plan is. You don't want to get down because he's, he's been lethal in that outside corner. And that 1-1 one, one pitch is a swing and a miss. Pitch right there. Yeah, that, even there. his fastball has great vertical movement. Yep. I mean, it, it's plus stuff. Here's the 1-2 pitch. Outside for a ball. It's now 2-2. Two and two. Marco Lavari with seven strikeouts so far in his game. And make it eight. It's a real good pitch right there. Nah, it, it's dealing. You, you get him on the ropes with two strikes, and you can get either away and low, or you kind of come up and in. It seems to be he's had confidence going to it, and I, I don't even think he's trying to hide it. And it's just a secret. Like, hey, it, it's coming. Try to get it. Big swing and a miss by Yanel Ponte as Marco Lavari finds a new groove like Stella found. She found her groove. Yeah. You need to find some new cliches because I've heard well, we're, It's yeah. a different broadcast. It's not like everybody listens to us. It's not like we're doing the Phillies and everybody watches it every night. I got to keep – I got to come back to some good stuff. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think that one was a good one, though. Well, I thought it was. Stella found her groove. Yeah, okay. That pitch is hit the first. Staying down. That's going to be a close play. 
Oh. And they get him at first. Good job by Lavari to cover the bag. Yes, it was. Oh, take another quick look to RK Chevrolet instant replay. We'll slow it down. Lavari did, though. He, he reacted pretty quickly. But hey, give credit. Staying down on the ball is Santiago. And they just do get that. As you can see him step on the bag. We'll move to the bottom of fifth. Score remains 8 to 2. Bob of the fifth here at Fioki Field in East Vineland. East Vineland leading eight to two. It's an exciting game. First batter, step to the plate. In the bottom of the fifth is Sam Garcia. He walked his last time up and scored and had an RBI single. Actually, an RBI walk his first time. Caden Perez gets ready to work in this fifth inning. Looks like got a slight delay. Uh, I can't probably just making sure that they got their lineup squared away. Believe you me, from a coaching situation, there's a lot of moving parts in managing an all-star team, and the last thing you want to do is make a mistake on the paperwork. First pitch is fouled away by Garcia. Because if you're not looking, someone else is. Oh, listen. We, we've had it We've had it happen to us on both sides of that coin. I mean, not to talk about a bad scenario, but look what happened in North Carolina State in the College World Series. Yeah. Swing and a miss. It's Good pitch. Only two. As winds in the 0-2 pitch. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. As Garcia goes down swinging. Down and I'll go back to the top of the lineup. With Benedito Andrioli well, stepping to the plate. It's the inning that North needs to have from a defensive standpoint. You got to keep this one close. Leave it right here. That ball's driven to deep right field. And that ball goes to the bottom of the fence. Andrioli chugs into second base with a stand-up double. You know what? That's the third time you've made that, that uh, statement tonight. And guess what happened? Just the opposite. Yeah. I, it's, That's baseball karma. It is. It's as consistent as uh, you can be inconsistently. Absolutely correct. <laughs> Andrew. <laughs> Andrew Illy three for four in the night as he reached on an error by the shortstop a couple innings ago. As Naz Mercado steps to the plate, he had a sacrifice fly his last time up. Effective at bat to get a run across for East Vineland. Reached on an error in the first and flew out to center back in the second. 
Pitch is fouled back. My apologies, Jaden Martinez hitting for Naz Mercado. Welcome to Amateur Hour, folks. I thought it was Amateur Night. It's been a couple. <laughs> wow. That ball is lifted to right field, making the grab, and Andrioli tagging and going to third. Here comes the throw, but not in time as the speedy Andrioli moves up to third base. A good move. Good move by the base runner. Justin Mars steps up to the plate with two outs and a runner in scoring position at third. First pitch, swing on, popped up to the first base side, giving chase and making the grab. Nice play, nice play there. Nice play over there. Real I nice believe that's play. Guadalupe that made that grab. Yep. And that will end the inning. We'll go to the top of the sixth inning with your score eight to two, East Vineland here on BFA Sports. Top of the sixth, as North Vineland steps to the plate. Marco Lavari now with 85 pitches so far. And leading off the top of the sixth is Nick Bancroft. First pitch to Bancroft is a fastball inside for a ball. Pitch misses the mark. It's now 2 0. Oh. Lavari does not want to lose Bancroft leading off, and he doesn't. Pitch over for the strike call. It's now 2 and 1. That 2 1 pitch is lying to center field. Oh, this is what you got to do. I mean, if you're, if you're North Vineland, you got six outs. You got a pitcher that I believe has enough bullets potentially to, to go the distance. I think he's at 88 or 89. I yeah, think. so you got to – we'll get an update real quick. Pitch has popped up. Third base side. And make – oh, that ball pops out of the glove. Hey, Garcia's oh, had uh, some struggles with the pop-ups on his side throughout this evening. It's a situation that can come back to bite you. Uh, baseball karma right there. Yeah, leaving the door open. Forget about it. And that's 40 on 40, right? Yeah. Yep, 40 on 40. Swing and a miss. <sighs> a big swing right there. Count now 0-2 to him. That was a six-run home run there. <laughs> I like that, Coach. 
Oh, he did not want to do that as he hits 40. And now two runners on and nobody out. Yeah, that's a tough spot to get hit by a pitch. Not a lot of meat on the ribs, unlike the ones that you like to eat, Al. <laughs> Extra barbecue, thank you. Yeah. Uh, you when are the fat jokes Coach, gonna stop? Yes. Coach, you should have seen the size of the rack of ribs that this guy ordered when we were at the barbecue place in uh, Scranton. Yeah, but my eyes weekend. were bigger than my stomach that night. I didn't eat them all. We had to do a we had to do an audit to make sure all his fingers were actually there when he was done checking the digits. Had to had yeah. to check them. I was I dove right into him. It was kind of like doing the backstroke, <laughs> blowing water out of my mouth. I was like all into it, man. You should have seen it. No, thank you. <laughs> all right, Lewis Rivera steps to the plate with two runners on and nobody out. Marco Lavari in a little bit of a pinch here. And speaking of pinches, Rivera tries to squeeze a little bun in. Yeah. Trying to break it up, right? I mean, the guy's dialed in. You, you want to be in a position that uh... – Pitch swung away and fouled. So quickly moves to 0-2. So this would be a big out for – Yes, it Lavari, would. If you can get him. The 0-2 pitch. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. Yes, he did. So Rivera goes down swinging. Ninth strikeout for Lavari. Well, that that's might do it for Marco Lavari. Officially gonna. Get him pulled out, 95, and Lavari came up big for this East Violence squad when they needed him the most. So backs against the wall, yep. and he's going to leave, at least with them, with a lead. As it's 8-2 to two now, one out in the top of the sixth. Runners at first and second. Dynamic of this one could potentially change just a little bit. And it looks like they're going to go to Connor Lamentier to try to close out the last two frames here. Got a line on Lavari. It's five and a third innings, four hits, two runs, both earned, two walks, nine strikeouts, and one hit batter. That's a good night. That's a good night for him. Uh, that's a great night. It's a good night. I mean, getting into the game three yep. situation in the championship series and already knowing that they kind of have a depleted bullpen, especially when you're playing in a doubleheader. That in itself yep. is what's uh, one of the many things that makes it unique but fun at the same time from a Little League rule standpoint, at least when it comes to the seniors. There's limitations of what you can do from a pitching standpoint on the same day. Now, Connor Lamentier will uh, come in to try to keep the door closed on a North Violent potential rally. So we're going to have an official timeout as uh, the Lamentier comes in. And, you know, I mentioned before, yep. got to make sure that you have your, your lineup set, your, your lineup correct. So they want to make sure that they have everything in the book according to, to the plan. I give it. You know, I don't know. I, I, I'm looking at the press box in the windows. I, I feel like we're in some kind of like <laughs> storybook. Like ha Halloween, like, uh, Halloween show. Uh, yeah. it's like, Wait, let me, let me go in here. Mm -hmm. How about like, that? It looks like an eclipse in window number one. Yeah. All right. There's Kathy right here. 
And there's the pizza right over there. Oh, coach. Yes. Really? I had two slices tonight. That was it. All right. The first and the last. Anything between doesn't count. You said two boxes, right? Yes. That's what I heard. I'm just saying. You, pick, you didn't pick up on that. I said the first and the last. Anything in between doesn't count. You totally lost that. You ha- I teed you up again. This is a typical situation with you. You just don't know how to play golf. I can put the golf ball on a tee, and you can't swing and hit it. Welcome, welcome to baseball. That's why I'm a better baseball player than I was a golfer. <laughs> oh, from what I understand, that's not true either. Uh, All right, let's get back to baseball. First pitch is over for a strike call. <laughs> Lamentier. Facing Carlos Rodriguez. And he had one pitch. Bit low for a ball. It's now one and one. If I'm correct, his dad was an excellent pitcher, too. Lemon's here. That one one pitch gets by, and the runners will advance to second and third. So force oh. out is now nullified. Oh, that's nice. And so is yep. a potential double play ball. Yes, it is. Certainly have been a game making the most of the opportunities. I kind of, I mean, this is an exciting night. A lot of fun to do, but I feel like I've been on like the Jerry Lewis telethon with all the baseball I've called. Uh, what well, we've called, I should say. Yeah. <laughs> Pitch is over for a strike call. Count evens up, but should, I'm sorry, he moves the full. Here sets and 3 2 pitch. Chopped to short. Run will score over the first high throw. And a oh. Safe all around. And runners will now be at first and third with one out. And it's now an 8 to 3 ball game. Yeah, you gotta now just try to keep the emotions in check if you're east. You, know, you have a six-run lead. Yes, there's runners on base, but you have one out. So do what you need to do. Even if you give up another run right here, just get the out, get an out and move on. That pitch is flared at her first base side and out of play. And a Lamentier not being shy to pitch the contact, saying to his defense, I have faith in you guys, and on the North Vineland side of things, you can put a big dent and start shifting the momentum with one swing of the bat, and Kazmer to come up big defensively, and now a chance for him to make some magic happen with his bat. He's currently down 0-2 to Lamentier. You know, and ideally, Coach, he's trying to hit this ball to the right side. It's definitely what you want to try and do. Oh. First and third. You send them. Not down to five runs, I don't think. Oh, just missed inside. Wow. Is Kashmir now. Boy, that, was a, that was a tough reaction by you, I'll tell you that, Al. Oof. I'm not really yeah. sure if uh, people are trying to get a jump. But I, there's a lot of people that think they're umpi they want to be umpires, at least for Halloween. Maybe the spirit yep, of Halloween. I Find some costumes down there. A lot of umpires. Pitch misses outside and low and away for a ball. So the count now moves to two and two, I believe. We can get confirmation from the home plate umpire. And he does. It's two and two. And a 2 2 pitch from Lamentier. Strike three. Struck him out. Oh. Oh, boy. Wow. Yeah, that's. As, that there is a <laughs> bad look. Oh, boy. Cashmere goes down looking. And that's the second out of the inning. And that'll bring up David Ortiz, who's been a real pain in the side for East Vineland. So our 
Ortiz out of the leadoff spot. Showing pop in his bat, producing lots of runs. He's got five, five RBIs in the first game. And he is currently, it looks like he's three for three today. Yeah, well, Lamentier and Gomez definitely talking about what they want to do in this spot because talk about cutting the lead in half with a swing of the bat. And make no bones about it. He has hit the ball hard multiple times. Pitches away for a ball. Now 2-0 to him. Lamateer with runners at first and third and two out. Strike call as Lamateer pounds the zone. Now evens up. Sorry, it's now, yes, yeah, it's two and one. Yeah. Some of this just comes down to strategy. Hard ground ball up the middle. Flip the second, gets the force out, and that will end the inning. North Vineland puts a run on the board here in the top of the sixth inning. It's still an 8-3 to three ball game as we move to the bottom of six here on BFA Sports. Bottom of the six, he's finally leading eight to three. Marco Lavari leads off. First pitch is over for a strike call. Now for that, number eight, Marco Lavari. Oh, one, two, Lavari. And that one pitch is outside for a ball. It's now one and one. And that 1-1 one, one pitch catches the outside corner for a strike call. It's now 1-2. and two. And a 
two pitches out of his own. It's now two and two to Marco Lavari. Lavari walked, reached on the fielder's choice, and flew out the center. He fouls that one off to the first base side. Count even at two and two. And a 2-2 pitch. Outside for a ball. Here's the 3-2 pitch. Pop foul and out of play. Lavari stays alive. Gary April gives his best radio voice, asking for the ball to return. And a 3-2 pitch. Foul back, and that was a vicious swing by Lavari. Oh, yes, it was. Yeah, he wanted all that one. So the count remains full to Marco Lavari. And the 3 2 pitch. Strike three struck him out as Lavari goes down looking. Big spot there. Trying to keep them in the game. So nice work on the hill by Ortiz. Donnie Gomez with a home run his last time up. Has a single and a walk. He's having himself a heck of a game. He scored twice. Pitch is high for a ball. Pitches out of the zone as well. It's now 2 0. Oh. Just give you a heads up. Cortez, Guadalupe, and Aponte in the top of the seventh. And he walks them. That's who Lamentil will be facing. That's why I'll make sure to clarify that. Again. Lamatier will be facing Xavier Cortez, AJ Guadalupe, and Yell Aponte. Two, three, four hitters. They yeah, look like. Quick conference of the mound. All right, so Cortez has back to the dugout. And he's going to. Continue to go with Ortiz here in the bottom of the sixth. Christian Willis steps to the plate, giving a runner first and one out. Yeah, so they got to be hoping for a ground ball, possible double play ball, possibly. First pitch misses down for a ball. Pitch is over for a strike call. Yeah, that's, that's a good it. pitch. So uh, what are you doing for Thanksgiving? <laughs> <laughs> it feels like I've been calling baseball games for the rest of the year. Yeah. That pitch is out. Oh, over for a strike call. Count is one and two. Christian Willis. Willis. <laughs> and the one, 
one-two pitch is pounded to short. It's going to be a tough play. Picked and throws a second. And they get a force out at second base. Uh, good hustle play, but a great effort by Aponte holding on to that bag, despite Gomez with a strong slide coming in. So now with two outs. And a runner at first. Now bring up Mookie Kent. That first pitch is high for a ball. Pitches away for a ball. Now 2-0 to Kent. Two zero pitches outside for a ball, so it moves the three and zero to him. Five one lead. Do you let him swing, Coach? No. Nope. Ah. And he walked him. As Kent looks disappointed, as he want to take it. He wanted. He wanted. He wanted. I'm sure, he did. Failed to mention Mookie Kent was hitting for Dimitri Santiago as he walks. So runners at first and second and two outs. And Anthony Rackets at the plate. As he rips that one down the third base side, but foul. And then the reason I said no when you asked that 3-0 because he wasn't in, in the vicinity. I mean, it would, yeah. you know, I mean, if, if you know he was spotting him up, then it's a different situation. So, Coach, not to put you on the spot anymore, but if you know you got a guy like Kent with power and if it's in the zone, would you let him it's in play? his zone, his not zone. in his the zone. zone. His, his zone. zone, gotcha. His zone. Right. But the thing that's hard to say is a, a great percentage of kids is – in this age, don't understand the zone as opposed to their zone. Mm -hmm. There's a big difference. Yep. Yep, I agree with you, Coach. That pitch has popped up. It's second baseman making the call and making the grab. It's worked by Aponte. Aponte makes the grab. We're going to the top of the seventh. Last oh, opportunity yes, yeah. for North Vineland. And before we go to a break, why don't we have Coach Ryder talk okay, a little about something? Okay, here we go, baseball fans, one more time. Rutgers Camden Baseball and Vineland Baseball in conjunction for a summer skills clinic, July 6th, 7th, 8th to 9th, ages 8 to 14. You can find it on Instagram. You can find it on Facebook. And I think East Vineland Little League, East Facebook, Little League page. Facebook page has it too. So give Coach Kulik a call uh, or Instagram and – Keep, keep us busy on July 6th, 7th, 8th, and 9th. We need 15 more uh, participants. We're good to go. All right. Well, we head to the top of the seventh. North Vineland down to their final three outs, at least in regulation. Stay tuned. We'll be back here on BFA.
Top of the seventh inning, last opportunity for North Vineland to at least try to tie this ball game. And leading off the top of the seventh inning is Xavier Cortez, number two. He's walked, struck out, and reached on an air. First pitch is over for a strike call. In this game, we'll make sure we give you a good view of the celebration and festivities. That pitch is high for a ball. It's now one and one. Connor Lamentier in relief of Marco Lavari. That pitch is wide for a ball, and it's now two and one. Sure, the North Vineland batters will be very, very selective as they try to work counts. Swing and a miss. Count now two and two. Yeah, uh, the normal strategy again goes out the window. You're down your final three outs, you're down five runs. Doesn't matter who's at the plate right now. I, you gotta work until you can get. Strike three, struck him out. As Cortez goes down looking. That's the second strikeout for Lamentier. And I'll bring up A.J. Guadalupe, who struck out both times up. Actually walked and struck out twice. That first pitch is outside for a ball. And a 1-0 pitch. It's 2-0. Oh. That pitch misses the mark. <laughs> Here's the 2-0 oh pitch. Swing and a miss. Oh, big swing right there. It's Guadalupe. Yeah. He's been taking some healthy hacks tonight. Just not making contact. We're gonna miss again. It's now two and two. Tell you what, that was two five-run swings right there. Oh yeah. <coughs> that ball will go a long way if he makes contact. Yeah, yes, it will. And a two-two pitch. Strike three. Struck him out looking. That's Guadalupe. Too late Goes for that. Down and Connor Lamentier coming in relief. That's his third strikeout. First pitch is over for a strike call as North Vineland is down to their last out. You can feel the energy in the air. And that 0 oh, 1 pitch is over for a strike call. I'll tell you what, you can look all night long, but Lamont here's the one you wanted here at the end. He's the one you, you wanted here at the end. There's the 0 2 pitch. Just missed off the outside part of the plate. Where Connor Lamentier would have had three backwards Ks with batters looking. Here's the pitch to Aponte. Hard ground ball to first. Knocked down and touches first base at East Vineland. Is your District 3 Senior Little League Champions. Wow, they got it done after North Vineland takes them to the mat to force a game three right here on their home turf. East Vineland manages to crown themselves the District 3 champions of 2021. They'll move on to Section 4. And Doug and, and Coach, I was going to sorry, Doug. It, did, it didn't look good for East Vineland. It, obviously, uh, the way that first game played out, you know, obviously the momentum was on North Vineland's side. East Vineland comes back strong and strong output or strong 
outing by Marco Lavari. Nine strikeouts. Absolutely. Only gives up two runs and that's why they play seven innings. And you made a mention. The right guy on the mound, the Connor right Lamontier. Connor Lamontier. I was trying to figure out who they had at the end and everything when they kept going on and on, but he was the man to have at the end. All right. Well, we'll have some festivities for you here as we bring out the banner for the District 3 champions. And Doug Stasek, I have no idea who would be the the MVP out of these two games, but we're not gonna we're not gonna do that. We're because you know what? They're all MVPs. They're all MVPs, coach, right? They're all MVPs. All right. Gonna be going over to the other mic for the festivities, so we'll stay here with good old camera number two. I can give you some as we uh, get ready. Let's go over some of the uh, the stats from this game. Again, Marco Lavari. Came out a little, struggled out a little bit, struggled a little bit in the beginning, but came out and really had himself a good outing. Pitching five and a third innings, only gave up four hits, two runs, two of them earned. He had two walks and nine strikeouts and one hit batter. And again, thinking about how Marco Lavari pitched tonight and how he struggled early, gave up those early two runs and just bared down. It was a heck of a night for East Violin and Marco Lavari.
Coaches Benny Andrioli, Mike Kiganzen, your manager Gabe Santiago. Ladies and gentlemen, your District 3 champions of East Conlon Little League. Well, well, you got the parents on the field. Pandemonium is certainly underway. And, man, it looks like East Vineland Little League going back to the sectional round. They're going to be head to West Deptford right after this coming up on July the 5th. But, uh, Al, outstanding night of ball for sure North Violin gave them everything that they could ask for and then some uh, just tremendous effort and got to give tip of the cap to East Vineland for getting it done yeah agreed you know the way North Violin came out game number one you could actually feel the momentum on their side of the field and going into game number two I'm talking to the coaches, and you could feel the tension. But you know what? Give credit where credit's due. North Island jumps out two to nothing. East Island jumps back and puts a, I believe it was a four or five spot in the top of the first. Don't have all the information in front of you, but I do apologize for that. But again, tip of the cap to East Island. Put the pressure right back on. Marco Lavari comes out a little shaky in the first. He ends up bearing down and having a spectacular baseball game. Pitched 95 pitches. We saw everything in this baseball game. Home runs. Double plays. It was just a fantastic effort by East Vineland. And again, tip of the cap to North Vineland for just being a gritty baseball team, well coached, and it was a lot of fun doing it with you, man. Hey, always a great time and to be back uh, where it all started for us, going way back to 2007 where uh, we met on the t-ball field and to see these guys parading around. Pretty awesome stuff, but this is just the beginning of the journey as they take the traditional – lap a victory lap that is around the field and they're headed to West Deptford next for section four so be sure to check out the East Vineland Little League Facebook page and of course the District 3 website but that'll do it for now it is a wrap and it is a final a doubleheader variety as the East Vineland Senior League All-Stars take the District 3 title here on their home turf at Fiocchi Field so until next time for BFA Sports and This Week in Baseball South Jersey, I'm Doug Stasek. I'm Al Fisher. We can't wait to see you play, play ball. ball.